This is 1.7 million. 1.7 million? Yep. So if you guys have social media, I'm sure you saw someone very special received our RM20 pocket watch. If you were looking around the watch community space online, you probably saw it everywhere. It was multiple viral clips. A lot of people saw that the watch was being sold to a very special customer. So we're really excited to bring that to you. We actually tag teamed that deal with a very, very, very good friend of ours who ended up getting the watch to my wear for the break. What's up, TPT gang? Thank you for tuning into this week's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out what happens this week. All right, guys, what's going on? Today is February 2nd, and I was driving down to the office today. I got a phone call from a couple customers saying that some new pieces had dropped from AP. I was like, what the heck's going on? Pulled over, opened Instagram, saw a couple glimpses of them, and I was like, wait, gotta do a reaction, gotta do a review of these pieces, and I wanted to pull them up, gonna open them one by one, let you guys know what I think in live, real time, but, Let's jump into it, let's see what I think, and let me know what you guys think down below about all the pieces that I'm about to show you. So let's open this up. We're gonna have piece number one. There is total one, two, three, four, five, six pieces that I have pulled up over here. But to open up the first one, let's see what we have here. Okay, so guys, first piece I pulled up, absolutely beautiful in my opinion at first glance. This is going to be reference number 26238. CE. It appears to be a 42 millimeter black ceramic offshore. In my opinion, just looking at this watch, I think this is going to be a pretty hot watch in the market. First glance, I think that this piece is going to fix a lot of the problems that previously offshores had in the market, which was being that they're cumbersome, they're quite large, a little bit difficult to wear. Chrono can sometimes dig into you. It gets, you know, a little bit hard to wear on your wrist over time. Being that this is black ceramic, 42 millimeter, very easy on the eyes, subtle watch, almost like a stealth well watch style. I think this is gonna be quite popular. I myself am a fan of it. I'm excited to see it. Definitely think that AP did very well on this one. Hopefully they can keep up the theme with the next couple watches, but overall I'm pretty happy with this one and thoroughly impressed. Moving right along, let's jump into piece number two. My laptop is giving me a little sneak peek preview. Just based on that, I don't think that I'm gonna be too happy with this one, but let's see what it is. Here we have a 26240 CE. So once again, CE meaning black ceramic. Black ceramic offshore. This guy is gonna be rocking the bumblebee or like gold theme almost. It has gold pushers, it has gold lugs, it has a gold in, inner bezel as well as around the chronos. I myself, just looking at it off first glance, I don't know guys, this one's really not doing the trick for me. I myself am not the biggest fan of that two-tone look. I definitely think this is gonna have a great place in the market. Uh, looking at the MSRP, 60,300, I think a little bit high as far as retail. I would have liked to see, you know, uh, retail closer to like 45, maybe 50,000, but there definitely is gold there. I know ceramic is not easy to work with. Overall, I myself would not be wearing this watch. I definitely think it will have a good place in the market, like I said before, but for me, I'm looking at kind of middle of the road, you know, five, six out of 10 here. I will have to see it in person though, but would have liked to see a different colorway from AP on this one. Next up is one that I think I'm gonna be pretty excited to see. This was the one that I saw the most, you know, little sneak peeks of and glimpses of on Instagram. Just looking at the preview, looking pretty serious, looking pretty good. But this is gonna be the 15550BA. So at initial glance, absolute showstopper. They knocked it out of the park. Tiffany blue dial, yellow gold, absolutely amazing color combination from this watch. Of course it is a 37 millimeter, but overall 61,500 retail. I wouldn't be surprised to see this watch probably going around like the 150, $175,000 price point. I know for sure a lot of guys are gonna be trying to squeeze into this watch. Girls for sure are gonna be loving it. Would have nice to also be seeing this piece as limited of let's say 100 or 200 or 250, but I know for sure this is gonna be limited to production just based on the colorway and being that it's yellow gold, Gold, not a common material from AP overall. Best guess is that this watch is gonna be very special, very desirable, and I freaking love it to be honest with you. I wish I could wear a 37 millimeter. If this was 39 or 41, I'd be all over it. Pretty cool watch, absolutely phenomenal colorway. Excited to see what it looks like in person. All right, so moving right along, we have the next piece, which I'm about to open. Wow, okay. AP definitely, 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 definitely did the right thing here. This guy is going to be the 26240BC. So blue dial, light blue dial, excited to see that. 
Recently, AP is going a little bit darker with their dials for blue that I've noticed, even on like, let's say their unique piece that they did for charity. Um, they did do some, you know, lighter blue dials, for instance, the Tiffany 37s, but to see this lighter blue dial on a 41 millimeter, just to double check, yep, 41 millimeter, 41 millimeter frosted chronograph, absolutely phenomenal, really excited to see it. This watch is one that kind of gives me, irritates me a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Back in around 2018 or 2019, when these frosted watches first came out, there was the 15410 BC with the blue dial, non-chronograph, and there was the 26331 BC purple chronograph. When they came out, no one wanted this watch. The non-chrono was going for like 45, 50K. The chrono was going for like 60, 65K. We were offered so many of them. We passed on all of them. We didn't know how the market was gonna adapt to the frosted. Ended up doing phenomenal after both pieces went vertical. Of course, today, you know, to pick up a 15410 BC, you're gonna be in the low 100s. For a purple frosted, high 100s, closer to 200. Very special piece. Happy to see AP going back to their roots on this one. I think that this is probably going to be the most popular piece in the collection out of the gate as far as men. Definitely, guys, that, that Tiffany blue dial, yellow gold, 37 millimeter is gonna probably take the cake overall, but this piece, really happy to see. Definitely about time that they threw this guy in there. There is a similar piece that is out in the market. However, I myself am really excited to see this one in person. Now, next up, we're going to be moving into, appears to be a 38 millimeter, just by the reference, 267150R. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, all right, so, so what we have here is a rose gold, almost like onyx black dial factory set chronograph. 38 millimeter, wait, actually, 38 millimeter, but limited edition of 25. That's pretty impressive to see from AP. Not often you're gonna be seeing pieces that are limited 25. Actually, the only pieces that I've seen recently that are limited to 25 are the frosted non-rainbow baguette skeleton. And then we also have something that's pretty similar, which is gonna be the perpetual calendar rainbow, um, which we have here in stock. Those are gonna be limited 25 and 20 respectively. But that being said, to see a 38 millimeter that's limited 25, Shocked to see that, to be honest with you. Um, Onyx black dial, baguette markers, factory set bezel, rose gold, really beautiful piece. I'm pretty happy with it. To be honest with you, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of these 38 millimeters in person. I think that sometimes the dial looks a little bit like congested and a little bit closed in. Not my favorite look. I definitely prefer the 41 millimeter. But that being said, just looking at the picture on the website, pretty impressive. Good job by AP. I know that that factory setting is definitely no joke and not easy to do. No wonder they made it limited 25. So overall, I think that this is gonna play a very nice part in the market. I know that 38 millimeters have been strong for both men and for women. So let's see what happens when this guy actually hits the market and it comes up for sale. Oh man. All right, so now, now for the last one, I, I kind of spoiled it a little bit because I did get a quick glance just now at it. And it's definitely gonna be, you know, some factory set stones in there, but this is a 26240 BC. So let's open it and see what she actually looks like. Wow. Holy shit, that's actually crazy. Okay, so it's about time, in my opinion, that AP did something like this. By the way, you guys will be able to see it here, of course, but this is gonna be giving me like 5711P vibes. I think it's about time that AP actually stepped up with their factory setting, did some pieces like this that are a little bit unconventional outside of the box. I myself, of course, my favorite color being blue, thoroughly impressed with it. I know for sure this is gonna be a showstopper in person. I know back a couple years ago, people were making these style watches aftermarket. Um, they were actually using like, you know, rose gold pieces with aftermarket diamonds. You saw actually the tourbillons with factory set stones from AP that were limited to five. It's not very often that AP does stuff like this with factory sapphires around the bezel. Very clean, very elegant, kind of like a darker blue dial, although I think it will look a little bit different in person. I myself, and this is, this is definitely the one that I'm most excited to see guys, 100%. Hands down after looking at these other ones, this one I'm dying to see in person. I know for sure this is gonna be a very expensive watch just based on looking at it. If I had to guess, I wouldn't be surprised if this watch was 350 or $400,000 when it came out, no question. Just comparing it to, like I said, the 5711P or other, you know, um, other options in the market, I definitely think this guy is gonna be up there in the price point. Excited to see it. You're definitely gonna be seeing this type of watch on celebrity wrists, the VIP customers from AP. Overall, my favorite pick, I can't wait to get it. Let me know what you guys think down below about all of them. 
I think that I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the 37 millimeter Tiffany blue, and then of course this 26240 BC factory setting for my two favorite. Let me know what you guys think down below. Cop, drop, what are you picking up? What do you have on your wish list? Let's get back into it. You missed the watch that was on the release. I'm confused, we did six of them though. Yeah, there's one more watch that you didn't get to see. Look at it. What? Yo, there's no way. There's just no way. Wow. We're gonna pop up a picture here on the screen because debatably, this is the most important watch from the release. I somehow just missed it. Don't know how I missed it, but 16202 BC, white gold 16202, huge step for AP with an almost starry blue dial. Let me see this. Yeah, it's like a starry blue, wow. See that? I don't even know what to say. That's, that is insane. That is actually insane. So as you guys know, I myself am not the biggest advocate for 16202s. I'm not the biggest fan of how they wear on wrist. Aesthetically, I'm a very big fan. I love 39 millimeters in general, but I myself am not too partial to 16202s or 15202s. However, this is no joke. This is probably one of my most exciting pieces that I've seen ever from AP. I don't know if you guys understand the history and how iconic the 16202 line and 15202 line from AP is, but to see them step outside of that, you know, those normal colorways, to use a precious metal, to have the starry dial, I'm more disappointed that I even missed this than anything, but this is definitely gonna be my number one pick. So forget everything that I said before. Number one, this is an absolute showstopper. Blue grain texture dial AP. Wow, absolutely phenomenal. Really excited to see this guy in person. Definitely gonna be hunting on the market to find one of these as soon as it drops. Estimated price point for this guy, I'm going to guess 140 to 160,000, I would guess minimum out of the gates, but this thing is no joke. I'm, I'm actually stunned, I'm thoroughly impressed. I think that dial in person is gonna be very, 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 very beautiful. So can't wait to see it. Sorry guys that I missed this, but happy I just saw it now because this just made my whole day. Absolute showstop. Your first Rolex, right? This is my first Rolex. Like first one. Rolex? First Rolex. Big moment? Big moment, yeah. Brand new, we got a Wimbledon full steel 36. Big size right now, we'll show you guys in a sec. These are the big boys. This is next time. Next time. <laughs> once the big views, step up. Once the views are up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, so how much are these? They range. I think the least expensive one in here is this, which is, I think, 195 Yeah. Obviously, the ones with diamonds. I mean, yeah, but. No, I mean, this is like a nice, like, classic one. Like this one. But, no, this one's way nicer. Okay, well, you can get this one. I'll get this one. Okay. Almost, I'm almost done. <laughs> Which one's the most expensive one? The most is this one. This one is 760. Okay, well I want that one. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. So cool. It's fully factory set. It's called snow setting, so it's a mix of small and big diamonds. Oh, uh, and you can barely even see like where it's set. Like there's no prongs That's that you can insane. visibly see. Yeah, and it's black diamonds all around the whole thing as well. If you look on the sides. Oh actually, what am I talking about? This is the most expensive one. Oh. This is, is one point seven million. 1.7 million? Yeah. No, it's not. Try it on. <laughs> so, how do I do it? Done? This is awesome. You can buy a house with that. Do you mind giving me a little bag for this, bro? Yeah. Thanks. Oh, kind of. It's like this. <laughs> you break it. You break you it. Break it. You buy it. You buy it. <laughs> how do I do it? Thank you. Yeah. Like this. Good. 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 Just kidding. I really thought I had it. <laughs> I got you. I'm sorry. What if I do a video? For my, my TikTok where I'm like, how many likes does this video need to get? I'm gonna get one of these. I know we do it. How many no, likes? No, would you play that game or not? <laughs> or not this or like any Rolex. Yeah, like, like, like two, billion, two, billion, two, billion like, two billion views, what, what two about, million what about likes. For like a Rolex, I'll be like, how many likes for, for a new Rolex do you get to pick? Which one? Or Anyone? Sneak it. And then uh, we can you can say like one million likes and we'll just see. It probably won't. That's tempting. What do you want to it's very tempting. Let me talk like, about it. We'll see. It. It can be, you can give me like a random one. Random one. It can be whatever you want. That's cool. I love that watch. 
And what's crazy is in 20, I think, I don't know how old was I. When I was like 14, I went into a boutique and they had that watch in the boutique for like 700,000 in the retail. Yeah. And now it's fine. Cheap. And now it goes for 1.7. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 1.7. Yeah. Back in the day though, like Richard Mills weren't like that. Like it was like a big thing for them to sell a piece. So like they sold at discounts and stuff back in the day, which is crazy. That's limited 30 pieces in the world also. Yeah. Who else has one of these? You know, Sylvester Stallone so just sold one. Really? Yeah, you had one before. You just put it at auction. Is that good or do you need another? Yeah, because it should be perfect. like a little, like yeah, a little loose, right? Yeah, perfect, yeah. Plus there's the quick one. Let me see, I can move it a little uh, bit. Yeah. I think this is fine because I don't want to be too tight. So that's probably really good. It's just this. Quick link. <laughs> it's pretty easy once I check it. Aw, your first Rolex, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think. Thank you. It's perfect. Yeah, I think the other one, the, one, the first time was a little, little bit. Yeah, now, bit. Yeah, but now it doesn't fall too much, so that's perfect. That's true. Should be. Is it better like this? Well, Here, lift your hand like this. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, why would you want it to be? It doesn't feel tight, that's perfect. Yeah. It feels like slightly bit tight. Yeah. yeah. That's my thing. Yeah, just like, okay, so I think the other one was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna move if you do that. It's true, and once you go outside, you'll, it, it'll expand, but your wrist will expand as well. Yeah, I think this is good. And the time is great. I'm not to say also, time. also time. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, bro. So this morning I came in, didn't get to do anything yet. Ethan came flying over to the desk. He's like, yo, they dropped some more APs. So I haven't seen them yet. Well, I low-key did cheat a little bit. I saw one of them. Can resist sometimes because they're just popping up all over Instagram everywhere. They released another two Code 1159s. Really nice Code 1159s though. Just sent one. The skeleton. Honest first opinion, the other Code 1159, the chronograph that is reminiscent to this, is actually the most popular Code 1159. Is actually doing quite well. So the rose gold with the black ceramic sides is a desirable piece. People like it. Um, I myself, just at initial first glance at this piece, I myself am not too fond of it. I see where AP is going here. I know they have been very heavy on the Code 1159s, really pushing them, trying to step into that more dress watch sort of uh, you know spectrum for, for watchmaking. I would have liked to see a leather strap on this watch. I think a leather strap would have really suited this watch, but I do see its place in the market and its versatility with that, I guess, nylon strap or Kevlar strap, nylon, nylon strap. It's also a super repeater. Oh, okay. Well, that's a pretty big game changer. Mini repeater skeleton. Okay, that's pretty serious. So this guy's gonna be carrying a pretty heavy price tag. I'm gonna guess it's probably MSRP around like quarter million dollars. I'm gonna guess quarter like quarter million dollar MSRP on a Code 1159. Very serious. I think this is gonna be a pretty desirable watch. I think it looks nice, pretty happy with it. I like the mini repeater window down at the bottom. I would like to see a better picture of the skeleton to really get a full grasp of it. I'm gonna show the picture on the screen of the exact picture that I'm looking at, but overall pretty nice watch. Honestly, pretty impressed by it, but let's see how the market reacts to it. As you guys know, Code 1159 hasn't uh, been the hottest commodity on the market, but I think that skeletons uh, will really, you know, the skeleton aspect of this will propel it into hopefully a different league. Let's see what else is next. Next one that I saw was the RD2. It's a new variation in titanium. Okay, one of my favorites. Calendar, super nice watch. And they did it with like a smoky blue dial. It's just titanium instead of titanium. Full titanium? Yeah, full titanium. Okay. All right, so if you guys have ever had the original RD2, um, well, the, the modern original one that they recently made probably like three or four years ago, it was titanium and platinum, platinum lugs, platinum bezel. I will say it's a very beautiful watch. I like the weight and the feel of it. However, that watch to polish, if you ever need to polish it, is literally like a two week job breaking that watch down and polishing it. Pretty hard watch to maintain overall, hard to service, hard to polish. This being titanium, also not an easy material to work with, but as far as aesthetics, I'm pretty impressed by it. I've always been a huge fan of the RD2s, never understood why they traded so close to retail. Such an important part of AP's history. I really do like that dial. Definitely gonna have to see it in person, but it looks like it has like a lighter blue in the middle and then kind of fades out, which AP's been doing a lot of. Very impressed by it. Not too many, you know, cosmetic changes, re really reminiscent of the original RD2. I would have liked to see maybe a few subtle changes, but that, uh, you know, moon phase at the top of the watch is very iconic, so I definitely understand why they kept that up there. Overall, pretty impressed by this. 
let's see what they have next. Next is a concept. This is like a new variation of the concept. It's a flyback chronograph, split second, with uh, titanium jigs. Oh, it's getting complicated over here. Skeletons. So we're gonna pop this up on the screen. All right, so if you guys have ever seen the original concept, the concept one, when I see this watch, this is giving me like concept one vibes. Although this is much more modern, I would say much more aesthetically pleasing. The concept one is uh, not the most beautiful to look at watch. To me, this is a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, easier on the eyes. I do like the interior of the watch. I like that they went with that whole skeleton vibe. I think that that is doing you know incredibly well in the market overall. The one notable thing that I will say is the date window. To me, it almost looks like digitalized. Like it looks like a digitalized date window. I don't know if you're noticing that. Oh yeah, it does. It looks like, yeah, like an alarm clock, like font. So they did, they definitely changed that, which is interesting. I mean, that's like a, a definitely a more like futuristic and modern look that they're going for. I like this watch overall. Does it say the millimeter size? It looks like a 44. 44 millimeter? Okay, so they kept it within the same normal spectrum that they typically do for concepts. Definitely gonna wear big. I myself am interested to see the strap as well. Looks like they went with like a two-tone strap on this. Pretty impressive watch overall. I mean, I, I definitely don't have too many complaints with it. Another watch that you're gonna have to see in person, you're gonna have to feel it, it's titanium, right? Yes, titanium. So yeah, it's gonna be light on the wrist. Other people have complained in the past about wearing concepts saying that they're very difficult to wear. I'm gonna guess MSRP around 300K, does it say? Doesn't say, but... Around 300K MSRP, I'm going to guess that it's gonna trade either close to MSRP or slightly below. That's my personal opinion on drop. We're gonna have to see how this one fares in the market, but overall, pretty cool piece, and moving on to the next one. So the last one's Chronograph Skeleton Tourbillon Code 1159. Okay, all right, so honestly, I like this one better than the first Code 1159 Skeleton that you showed me. There's a lot going on here. So Turbion, Chronograph, Skeleton, Perpetual. Wow, okay, so very, very, very serious watch. A lot going on here. Definitely some changes to the date window as far as the font. I think that this watch is pretty well put together. To have so many complications in a single watch, they did a really good job here. This is a not an easy feat to do. I would say this is probably gonna go into like the very upper echelon of, of AP's watchmaking as far as complications. Going to be one of their most complicated modern production watches for sure. It is crazy that they got it all inside of that little Code 1159 case. Do they have a picture of the case back? Because that's definitely where there's gonna be a lot of action. Wow, yeah. Grand and petite sonnery here. Okay, so they're and really not- Split second flyback. So they're really not yeah, playing around over here. They're really not playing around. Okay, so like I said before, guys, it's definitely, definitely, definitely in the upper echelon of AP as far as like watchmaking goes. I myself uh, could definitely see myself wearing a watch like this. Very complicated. It's gonna be a very expensive watch, I'll tell you that. If I had to guess MSRP on something like this, we're talking at least half a million dollars, I'm gonna guess. At least a half a million dollar MSRP, which is pretty crazy considering this is going to be the most expensive Code 1159, I'm sure. They went with white gold on the case, which is pretty impressive. So this is gonna be more of that stealth wealth, watch collector, watch enthusiast, very serious AP collector sort of vibe. You're not gonna be seeing this on like, let's say, in my opinion, celebrity wrists or someone who just wants to pick up a cool watch. This is gonna be going to the guy who's really looking for something out of control, crazy, very special. I like it. I mean, the interior is really nice. I wanna know if it's gonna be like leaning towards blue or, or gray in real life. To me, it's like almost on a spectrum of like leaning towards a little bit bluish interior. That might just be the picture, but it is, you know, pretty, pretty gray based on just first appearance. But overall, crazy watch. Super, super, super excited for AP to step into this spectrum. It's gonna be really hard for watchmakers to compete with something like this. Getting so many complications to a small case, this is typically something you see on like a 6002G or a Grandmaster Chime or something very serious from Paddock. I'll tell you if RM tried to fit this many complications into a case, it'd also be a much bigger watch. But one thing that I've always said is I always wanted to see like Rolex try to step into this realm of watchmaking as far as complications. I don't know if they ever will, but really impressed by this. Really excited to see it in person and hopefully we're gonna get a chance to move one of these, but I know they're gonna be rare for sure just based on looking at it. Apparently they also went like made sure to make it extremely durable and water resistant too. So water resistant water mini repeater. Well. Yeah. Okay, that's incredibly, incredibly 
Wow, that they 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 are not messing around with that. 1140 components in the whole thing. That's incredible. Well, I hope hopefully uh, hopefully we don't have to have Patrick ever polish one of these or service one of these because this is gonna be a six <laughs> six to two six months to two year job trying to put that back together. That's impressive. So I hope AP drops a video about this, shows everyone how uh, you know it's put together and, and the components around it because very impressive watch overall. What else do we got? That's all. That's all except for the avocado, which I guess you've seen. So this is the one that I saw on Instagram driving down here. At first, I thought this was a watch that was already in production that someone changed a strap on, which I thought was pretty cool. But then I realized I was like, wait, hold on a second, because I saw this nickname, the avocado, which we were just kind of laughing about right before because I'm not sure how the market, you know, is going to feel about that. Serious watch to be called an avocado. Of course, chronograph, tourbillon, black ceramic, beautiful colorway as far as like the avocado colorway. I actually like that they went with a little bit of a lighter, you know, greenish yellow color. It's not like, you know, lime green and it's not like... It's kind of like pistachio, pistachio green. I, I wouldn't say avocado, but... I wouldn't say avocado. <laughs> I also wouldn't call it pistachio, but I, I think definitely closer to the pistachio colorway for it, but I'm impressed by it. I'm really impressed. I think that once again, AP definitely, you know, capitalizes on some of the feedback that they're getting from customers and mistakes that they've made in the past. They went with a lighter case, they went with ceramic, they went with a very aggressive look as far as the interior, really got all the complications jammed in there. The tachometer, you know, is, is, is a hard thing to put into a watch with that many complications to look like aesthetically pleasing and eye pleasing and to have it all symmetrical, it's really impressive. So they did a really good job here. When I see this watch, there's one person I think of right away, Dan Bilzerian. Instantly, I can see him wearing this. I actually see Ed Sheeran and um, John Mayer definitely be picking this guy up. I think that's kind of like their style and, and definitely something they're gonna be wearing. Overall, really freaking beautiful piece, I think, of the ones that we saw today. This one is my favorite aesthetically. Definitely the grand complication going to be my favorite overall, but I think that this is going to be the real, you know, killer of the bunch. So excited to see them, excited that AP is doing big things. Two day drop, so they dropped yesterday. There's even a couple more pieces that I saw that I want to talk about and touch on because they just like keep coming out of the woodworks. I thought there was only going to be a handful of pieces. It's looking like there's closer to like a dozen pieces or more. Really excited that AP is going to be dropping these new pieces and can't wait to see them in the market. Thank you guys for checking them out. Let us know down below which one you guys like, which one's your favorite. I hope you picked the avocado because that one is mine. Which one was your favorite, Ethan? I think, bro, honestly, I think the RD2 is the nicest one. I love the dial. What do you got here on your table, bro? Here we have some watches and some jewelry since uh, Valentine's Day coming up soon. If you want to get your partners right, here we have a 41 millimeters Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar in rose gold, blue dial, beautiful piece. Otherwise, we have a 34 millimeters Royal Oak uh, white dial, factory set uh, bezel. If not, we can go a little easier with a Mother of Pearl uh, factory set, two tone Rolex Datejust. We got plenty of stock, 34 Valentine's, we got rings, we got earrings, some diamond rings or some baguette bangles in rose gold, 14 carats. If you liked any of the watch, DM me and I got you. Valentine's Day. All right, so Friday afternoon at the office, 6.30. Been waiting patiently by my phone all day because I've been working on a pretty big deal. Actually, a very big deal that I'm hopeful will come through. So about five days ago, I got a call from one of my customers who lives in Canada. He was looking for a very special piece. Actually made the deal very easy for me. He wanted a very specific piece. He had a price point in mind that he wanted to be around. I was able to make the price point happen, made the watch happen somehow. And to give you guys a little sneak peek, there's a higher probability that we're gonna be closing this deal up today within the next like 30 minutes to an hour. And it's a very special watch. It's an RM47 Samurai. So I'm sure you guys have seen about four or five months ago this watch actually released. It was very popular in the market. However, you're not seeing many of them because they are very rare and very difficult to find and not many people are getting them. I'm sure also RM is spacing out the pieces throughout the year, so they're not all being sold you know, in a certain window. People are waiting for delivery, they're being made. It's a very complicated watch. 
a lot of hand finishing on the watch, a lot of complicated and sophisticated watchmaking going into it. So let's see if we can get it wrapped up. I'm really excited and should be getting that phone call within the next like 30 minutes to an hour or so. So we can get it locked in and uh, have a really exciting Friday and a very big deal here at Time Peace Trading. Also, one more thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, we had something else exciting happen this week here at the office. So a couple weeks back, I showed you guys the RM20 Turbion Pocket Watch. Very unique piece, very special piece. When we buy something like that, we're anticipating to hold it anywhere between three months all the way up to a year. It's not necessarily a very fast moving watch. It's not something that people just come in, they're like, hey, I'm going to spend 200 grand on an RM20 pocket watch Turbion today. Doesn't happen like that. It requires marketing, finding the right customer. You also have to have to have the right pool of customers to be able to offer a watch like that too. So luckily enough, we've had it for about 30 days now. On Wednesday, I got a call, very special VVIP customer, picked it up, shipped it out, completely done deal, really excited for him. Congratulations, you definitely know who you are and you guys will definitely be seeing that piece on social media. So RM20 Pocket Watch is actually sold, no longer here at the office and maybe we'll get a chance to buy another, another one in the future, but I'm gonna be honest with you, it's probably like a once in a decade kind of piece because not many come up for sale, but really exciting moment for us. Happy to get the deal done and congratulations again. Let me teach you about the importance of owning a timepiece. There's this principle in the 48 laws of power that dictates that which cannot be seen counts for nothing, right? So if you have money in the bank account and you're trying to do business, you're trying to get some deal flows, you're trying to move and, and you're trying to get to the next level, you need to be able to showcase in some way, shape or form that which you've accomplished because that which cannot be seen counts for nothing. So pick up a timepiece from the timepiece trading boys and uh, yeah, level up. What we got today, G? Some of the stuff that we have, we got some Rolex. We're a little low. That I can tell. The shelves. Been keen on this lately. I just want my first watch too. Amazing, bro. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Big deal. Mm-hmm. Got a good deal on it. Uh, what's this one? Thirty-eight. Thirty. This one is right under forty. At thirty-nine-five. And they were that high that my cost on that's like fifty-five. Did you guys buy a lot of Pico Top stuff or? We did, yeah. We lost a lot on APs, but like, you know, we, we're not in the market of just sitting and holding. We have to sell, to sell our market too. Are you a big fan of Patek? Patek, some models. What's this going for? That one is going to be a 90. No, not too bad. I can help. What's the retail on it? The retail on this, so this one's I uh, need to get a retail plug for this shit, bro. What? Uh, have you tried? Have you tried going into the boutiques? I haven't mm -hmm. because I, I have a thesis that if I commit to a brand like Rolex and I just sport Rolex, mm -hmm. I feel like as status kind of elevates, I'll be able to kind of get in the room for some of like the more exclusive pieces Definitely. as opposed to not being a watch, a, as opposed to being um, all over the place with a ton of brands. Just, I mean, it's fucking nice. Yeah, I like how the, the brace just like just hugs onto your wrist. Especially I like how it's slim, thing. but 90 on the wrist scares me. I lost the Wimbledon on the plane. You, just, you just took left, it off? Yeah, I left it on the plane accidentally. Here in Miami. Oh, okay. uh, what's your name? Uh, uh, what's her name? Maria, don't the, don't Mar Maria the cleaner at, uh, at Qatar Airlines ended up with a nice Rolex that day. I wonder what they really do with that. Oh, bro, that what? Maria went, to, went home to Carlos. I was like, husband, I found something today. Your salary. <laughs> Did you watch the game? I watched the game, yeah. Fucking nuts, huh? So with RM, yeah, you just pull. How much is this? That one we can do 205. Is this fake? No, that's a okay. black buckle, yeah. Okay, no, I mean fake as in like, there isn't really a buckle, like you don't buckle it with the- No, you do, so you do it like this, it's kinda- yeah. So this is about who can make the most complicated watch, that's the name of the game, right? The biggest complication. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just time and day. It looks all complex and stuff, like for example, look at this watch right here, you see these big buttons, you think they do something, they're just cosmetic though. They don't do shit? <laughs> so there's this huge price with uh, the titanium casing, right, that goes up. Not titanium, or the what is it? The one that is like anti scratch. This one. It's like a metal. yeah, it's a metal. It's there's a long, uh, it's a long. 
What is your take on just owning a Cartier piece? Just is it jewelry? Is not even worth it, right? Like, how do you see it? It's I was the watch wise. I like the skeleton, but something like that, I wouldn't recommend you buying it from Cartier because you're gonna pay retail plus tax for that watch. I can get you like ten off, fifteen off. Yeah. Off but is it pretty stable at 10, 15 off? Would you they, say? Or? They they fluctuate around there. I know back like two, three years ago where the you know this this skeleton bust downs were a phase and uh, those watches went up and they're trading close to retail but i wouldn't say that you know you buy one and then ever you're going to be up on it unless you sell it there was one um that i saw it was like the it was like the rose gold with the crocodile strap or mm -hmm. something that was nice but i almost got scammed into buying at retail fuck that <laughs> cartier price is down you know, hit me up for any of the off-brand stuff i can get you uh, right business. there boys hit them up thank Should you really appreciate cartier. the business uh, thank you as always. Thanks for taking care of me. All right, guys, what's going on? I hope you guys had an amazing weekend. It is Monday here, Timepiece Trading. I just wanted to check in with you guys as we actually had a very eventful and exciting weekend that we're happy to share with you. So if you guys have social media, I'm sure you saw someone very special received our RM20 pocket watch. If you were looking around the watch community space online, you probably saw it everywhere. It was multiple viral clips a lot of people saw that the watch was being sold to a very special customer so we're really excited to bring that to you we actually tag teamed that deal with a very 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 good friend of ours who ended up getting the watch too I'm so happy for him to be wearing it and enjoying it. I think it's the perfect customer for the watch. So really happy to share that and bring that to you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed all the content you saw from it. I myself was laughing my ass off all weekend. It was hilarious. The whole outfit with the pocket watch set up, absolutely phenomenal. So thank you again to my buddy who made that happen. And thank you, of course, to the customer. Now, moving along, we actually have a very big event and holiday coming up that I wanted to talk to you guys about. All right, so as you guys know, here at Timepiece Trading, we're known for watches, but of course we do do jewelry as well. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of an example of the type of stuff that we can do. This is a very serious chain for a customer that we just ordered. So we had this made, we're actually gonna be shipping this out to a customer. This is over a one kilo Cuban that's gonna be going out. Solid gold, no diamonds. Honestly, these are really pretty safe pieces to buy if you're gonna go big, heavy, like jewelry look. As far as premiums and stuff like that, you do pay a premium, of course, for the labor and the price of the gold. But compared to other jewelry, all gold is typically a very safe bet. This is something that we can facilitate here, as well as diamonds. We do do engagement rings, we do do bangles, we do everything under the sun, tennis, Cuban, anything you can think of, even custom jewelry. I know that Valentine's Day is coming up, guys, so if you are looking for something, please let us know before the day of or before the day right before Valentine's Day. I know a lot of people like to reach out around then to get a gift for their wife or girlfriend or something like that. Please reach out to us before. Let us know if you need any jewelry or watches or if you're looking for anything. And thank you guys. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. Thanks for the continued love and support. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next week.